Whenever a link click ends off on a cliffhanger, we often feel as if we're almost cheated out of a proper ending. But this time, we can feel rather satisfied yet craving for more with what we got. Which then leads into my next point. We first need to talk about the ending of this episode which may sound a bit odd in a chronological standpoint, but I think it'll be fitting as it'll set the foundation for this entire episode. Ever since the start of season 2, Luwang has been acting strange and we have plenty of reason throughout the season to believe that he knows of future events. We learned that Lu Guang has been a hypocrite this entire time as he's been constantly telling Cheng not to interfere with the past but he's been doing it this entire time. Lu Guang being able to jump into photos is a crazy revelation because now is he just a better version of Cheng? But I am sure there are going to be different limitations such as his last chance which could maybe mean that he can only reenact the events only one time. The same restrictions with photos and potentially many others were unaware of. His reason for going back to the beginning could have nothing to do with his restrictions and it was just simply that he wanted to relive the moments with Cheng one last time. From the beginning, if his death truly was a no that couldn't be avoided. Remember when I said Lu Guang has been acting strange ever since season 2? Well, I lied. He's been arguably acting strange ever since episode 1 of the very first season. From the beginning, Lu Guang was much more experienced with their powers than Chang and he called the shots and the rules, such as not to ask or change the past and future. To limiting Chang to 12 hours within a photo when in reality he could probably stay in however long he like. But he'd be out of reach for Lu Guang's guidance as he can only see 12 hours within the photo. We were led to believe that it was due to Chang's impulsive personality that he was afraid he could potentially alter the past events. Which seems to be true but now it's starting to feel like it's so we can see the outcome for what is to happen to Chang specifically. As it is within the 12 hours because clearly he doesn't care about altering the past as much as he led us to believe because he's been doing it this entire time. Now the big question is when and how far back did he leap? In the final moments before he jumps, we get a glimpse of his watch, and it'll be difficult to read unless you flip the image around. September 13, 12.05 AM, and the year is purposely blurred out. Which is interesting because 091305 is the exact same pin code on his phone. Chang said he saw him enter his pin in the past, so at the bare minimum it had to be before the night where he got stabbed by Shaoling. This got me digging to find the exact dates on each of the episodes of Link Click and that's where things get weird. We only ever get the exact date and time of any episode through Lu Guang's watch and the earliest date we have is in episode 1 of the very first season, 04-16-2021. In the second episode for their next job, the date was never explicitly shown but the news of Emma dying was so fresh in Lu Guang's mind so it could have easily been a day or two after. Now fast forward to their next job, literally, because now it's 10.06.2021 shown in episode 5. And we know for a fact that Cheng isn't allowed to be in a photo for more than 12 hours, so at the start of episode 3, it would still be the same exact day. This might not seem all that weird as they could be jumping ahead in time after each job, but nothing like this has ever happened again. The latest date ever shown was in episode 10 of season 1, 10-22-2021, am And given the day cycles of season 2, it's easy to conclude that in current time, it's 10-24-2021, 2.30pm. The time on Lulan's phone that Tenjin left behind on the park bench. Because we know, Keen likely got put behind bars on the same day and we see the chief wearing the same clothes in the prison at the welcome party. And Cheng is still recovering from his gunshot the night before. We know that aside from the first major jump in the timeline, Link Click has been pretty consistent throughout. So what if Cheng's original death was in season 1 sometime between episode 2 and 3? It wouldn't be that crazy because if you think about it, this entire season, the main objective of the enemy is to get Minlu's phone. And the events leading to Minlu's death and the beginning of Emma's arc is within the period where Cheng could have died. 
If we are to believe that it was in the same year, it's further evident that Chang was wearing the same clothes that he wore throughout season 1 and so did Lu Guang at the moment of his jump. And given what they wore in season 2, we now know that they do regularly change their attire. So this might have been done purposely to hint that it could have been in the past. Now, think back to the first episode of season 2. Lu Guang says everything is changing and maybe it's better to face death now if it cannot be avoided. As if he was accepting their fate that they were both dying that night as he blacks out. Which is odd because it wasn't the same date as 091305. So why would he think it was related as it could be a death completely irrelevant to that specific node? Unless it was the same perpetrator, someone being controlled, killing Cheng. He also said everything is changing. Now what if Lu Guang has actually been abusing his 12 hours feature site constantly? to prevent Chang from dying at all cost. And this event wasn't what he originally foresaw. Because remember, the main villain who revealed themselves is trying to bring parallel lines together to turn all uncertainties to certainties. Meaning he has some ability that affects future events. But it seems he's unable to stop changes to the past. Which is why people like Chang need to be eliminated. And the reason to why he's trying to put a stop to Lu Guang's plan as he's been altering past events for a very long time now. Now, we can finally talk about the twins. We now know that the Fox animation is coming from the perspective of Tenchi, as she's the one who wanted to keep the family together. As she broke into tears when she heard that Lulan was considering divorcing Li Fan. I've also never been happier to be wrong that she wasn't actually being unfaithful. And I'll also give benefit of the doubt to Mr. Zhao that he didn't have ulterior motives. The way the fight ended at the apartment was a little suspicious. Because originally, I had a whole scene playing out in my head with the hand marks around Lulan's neck. But it just randomly appeared in the next frame. I'll let it go as the scene did end up tying up loose ends. The conclusion was simpler than we're used to from Link Click, but maybe the straightforwardness was the real trick up because we're not used to it. Now given Tension's troubling childhood, growing up in a family with domestic violence and a tendency of acting out, we can come to understand how he ended up the way he did. If there's anything we can take away from this episode, it's that the rules we knew about anyone's abilities is not set in stone. Tenchi somehow manages to fight off Tenchin's control and allow Bin to break free, and she's overwhelmed by his memories, with his life flashing before his eyes as it drew parallels to her family situation. This also confirmed that the Fox animation remained truthful when it showed Tenchin actually fail to get the kill on Bin at the final moment. As Tenchi was running, she dropped a childhood photo with the writing on the back. I can't live without my good brother, and we see Tenchin begin to get emotional to the sentiment behind her writing. We know that Tenchin is more loyal to Minlu's younger brother than Keen, as he acted out solo on his retrieval of Minlu's phone. But this next action where he brings a photo to Lu Guang cannot be described by anything else other than a betrayal. Given how things ended for Tenchin and Keen, it's likely that it wouldn't be all that different than what he and Minlu's younger brother has. A relationship of convenience, one using the other for their own benefit. Tenchin's main goal is still to restore his family and this was probably a promise that Hat Guy gave to him. I don't think he's truly loyal just yet and he would betray him at moment's notice if it benefited him. I don't believe for a second that Tenchi actually died until we get actual confirmation, because if Wang Zhuang manages to survive that, then Tenchi should be able to pull through as well. This next scene where they're potentially baiting her death as she transferred a portion of her memories to Shaoling, this might be another addition to her abilities as it seems like everyone has more powers than we originally thought. Now, back to Tenchin. Him willingly running off without putting up a fight was quite strange, because you would assume that he would rather die than watch his sister bleed out given their bond. I am starting to think that in the moment where they held each other's hand, Tension possessed her to try to get an understanding behind her actions and her refusal to cooperate with him. 
and as a result, understood that for the sake of their goal, he had to get away. This is probably all tied back to the moment where Tenchi got a hold of Lu Guang's photo and learned something through his memories that could help them. She probably had a plan in mind and conveyed it to Tenchin through her memories. I think Tenchin might be playing double agent as he willingly complies with Hat Guy and leaves a major clue for them. Lulan's phone at the park bench. Because remember when they made a big deal back when they're tracing the message and it was to her phone. It might be another paradox where it could end up being the key to defeating Hat Guy. Also, I need to say that it's wild that he kept his dead mother's phone this entire time for personal use and didn't change the number. Now for Xiaoling, it's going to be interesting to see what she does with the information she gathered from the memories of Tenchi, and whether or not she'll pressure Lu Guang into telling her about his plan. Ever since the start, we have a sense that Xiaoling puts a lot of trust into Lu Guang's judgement due to his maturity in comparison to Cheng. So she'll likely lay low until the right opportunity arises where she can bring it up. This will end up giving her a bigger role in the next season as she essentially is the bridge between Cheng and Lu Guang's relationship, given the power she holds with the information she has. If Tenchi manages to survive, she might be the only person whom she can talk to about this. In the next season, Cheng might be the only one left in the dark. While Lu Guang works solo, Xiaoling and Tenchi forms a team and we have Tenchin and Hat Guy in a potential double cross. With all these new storylines and character introduction and the removal of Keen, it's beginning to feel like that the chief might start to take a step back in the next season. Which is unfortunate because he had his hero moment when he took down Keen. We can at least confirm that he probably has the best hands out of everyone outside the local senior citizen club. Anyways, what an amazing season finale and what a journey season 2 took us on. It's going to be hard to top the finale of season 1 even though it ended on a crazy cliffhanger. But it's right up there with it. I would also like to take this moment to thank everyone who stuck around this entire series. And I'll see you all for the next season.